Hello, I'm Karina Taylor-Brown, an associate broker with Remax Allegiance, and I'm here to spend a couple of minutes to review the regional sales contract with you so that you can have this information before you make your offer. The regional sales contract, well, altogether will be about 24 pages. The main body of the contract is eight pages designed to work in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, and from there we add the relevant jurisdictional addendum and the other addenda that you'll want to have in your contract. We're just going to talk about the first eight pages. On the first page of the contract, we have the date that the contract's written. You want to make sure that your name is spelled correctly, whether you're the purchaser or the seller. Next, the real estate companies are listed. The listing company represents the seller, and the selling company represents the purchaser. The real property is described, both with a street address and also with the legal description. This could be the unit number and condominium, or it could be the lot, block, and section number within the subdivision that describes the uh, property, the way that the real estate tax assessor looks at the property. Next, we determine whether you're adding Virginia, D.C., or Maryland jurisdictional addendum, and, and that is an important part of the contract. Paragraph 3, you'll be making your offer. How much the price is, what the down payment is, and then the amount of the financing. 3C outlines the type of financing, whether you're obtaining a loan, assuming a loan, whether it's FHA, conventional, VA, etc. And then there's some more terms in the uh, financing to be concerned about. Paragraph 4, the deposit, we often call this the earnest money deposit. This is a check that holds the contract together. This is the strength of your offer, and that check means that the seller cannot sell the property to somebody else, and also you can't just go and buy another property without being in risk of losing that check. Now, once the contract's ratified, you'll have your contingencies before the contract becomes completely firm and binding, but the deposit is there as the strength of your contract. Your down payment, you have to have the balance of your down payment ready on the closing date. The closing date is called the settlement date. That's outlined in paragraph 6 and where you would like to go for settlement. Property seven, uh, Paragraph 7 is the property maintenance and condition paragraph. Uh, sellers are no longer selling their property in normal working order. The seller is selling whatever it is that's standing there and that's what you're buying. So you probably will want to get an inspection so that you can determine the accurate condition of the property and if it meets your um, satisfaction. If not, you'll want to negotiate so that you and the seller uh, determine whether you're accepting a leaky faucet or if you want them to replace the roof, etc. Access to the property. The seller has to grant reasonable access for the home inspection, for the termite report, and for the bank's appraiser to come through to evaluate the market price of the property. They don't have to allow other access to the property, although they might if you ask them nicely. Utilities. The utilities that run with the property are described in paragraph 9. Public water and public sewer, or is it on well and septic? Is gas available at the property? Paragraph 10 describes the personal property and fixtures that come with the real estate. The uh, built-in cabinets, the wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, screens, storm doors, landscaping, they're uh, listed in the boilerplate. And then also whether or not they're adding the refrigerator, the dishwasher, the disposer. If you want the washer and dryer, make sure that the correct box is checked on your contract. Leased items will be described. These could be satellite dishes or propane tanks, etc. If the property is to sell as is, it should be noted here and a special addendum should be attached to the contract if it's selling completely as is with mold, etc. Paragraph 11, financing. You are to complete your financing within seven days of the contract being ratified. So once the buyer and seller have agreed to all the terms in the contract, then the purchaser has to make sure that all of their documents are over to the lender within seven days. The purchaser can go with a different mortgage company or different financing as long as they do not delay settlement. And you do lose some protections when you move uh, mortgage companies. Paragraph 13, the purchaser represents whether or not they'll be living in the property and whether or not their mortgage officer, uh, their loan officer can tell the seller how strong their mortgage application is. Paragraph 14 is the termite inspection. These are required on single-family homes, townhouses, and garden-style condos on the first three floors. This could be performed by the seller's, age, uh, the seller's termite company or the 
purchases termite company. However, the seller is required to remedy termite damage and uh, make sure that the property is free of termites. Damage or loss. You'll be buying the property on the closing date in the same condition that you saw it when you contracted for it. So the seller has to be sure to keep their insurance in place through the term of the contract. Title. The seller will be conveying good title to you, the purchaser. So the seller's lien should be paid off. Any judgments against the seller have to be uh, discussed and remedied before uh, title can be transferred. Also, um, we have to make sure we have the right people signing the contract. The purchaser designates the settlement company and they'll be doing a title search to identify all the title issues and make sure that they're taken care of in time for closing. Possession date. Here in Northern Virginia, by convention, when you go to the closing table with your money and the loan is there, you walk away with the keys. Fees. The purchaser and the seller will pay the normal closing cost fees as outlined um, either from an estimate from their realtor or from their mortgage company, etc. The broker's fees are paid for by the seller. Adjustments. Real estate taxes, rents, insurance, um, these are paid up to the date of closing by the seller and after, close by, after closing by the purchaser. So the title company will be making sure that any adjustments are accurately made uh, to the date of closing for the different costs involved in owning the property. Attorney's fees. If either party, if either the purchaser or the seller breaches the contract and the contract um, goes into default, then the losing party would pay the attorney's fees. Performance. This says that the buyer and the seller will be ready on the date of closing. So the buyer has to have their, their deposit ready and their loan ready, and the seller has to have the property vacated and title issues remedied in time for closing. Paragraph 23 outlines default. If the purchase is not ready, they could be in default, and likewise with the seller. Paragraph 24, the other disclosures, uh, these used to be on a separate page, and these are things that you should uh, con uh, consider and educate yourself about really before you write a real estate contract. A is the property condition, things such as, let's see here, we have septic fields, zoning issues, airplane noise, radon, mold. Uh, this is, we catch a lot of these at the home inspection. Legal requirements, B, the property, the contract has to be in writing in order for it to be enforceable. C, financing, buyers can go wherever they want to for financing and have a look around. D, brokers, brokers can tell you about mold, about home inspection issues. However, they are not mold inspectors, they're not home inspectors. They can tell you about tax issues and contract issues, but they're not tax advisors and they're not attorneys. So um, that's the role of the broker. Also, some brokers will have, most brokers will have affiliations with title companies and mortgage companies, and these have to be disclosed to you. Property taxes can go up if you've paid a lot more for the property and it hasn't been recently assessed. In Virginia, we don't worry too much about that. Our properties are assessed every year. In Maryland, they're assessed biennially, so that can be more of an issue. F, property insurance. Uh, there is a clue database for insurance um, claims. So if a property has had a lot of insurance claims against it, it can be a little bit difficult to obtain insurance. This is something that we often check out when we're doing the home inspection. Assignability. This contract is specific to the purchasers and sellers listed on the front page of the contract. Um, we don't assign these contracts to other people. 26, definitions, days or calendar days. So if the contract calls for seven days, that does include Saturday and Sunday. Male and female, all are the same. And whenever we talk about a day, our real estate days end at 9 p.m. The date of ratification is once all parties have agreed to the contract and initialed off on all the changes. We can send faxes and emails um, just as easily as sending originals. If the contract becomes void because of uh, contingency, then all parties work quickly to obtain a release so the seller can go about reselling their home and the purchaser can uh, get their deposit back if that's applicable. Whether or not a home warranty conveys with the property. Time is of the essence. This means that we're working on American time. If it says the 20th, be ready on the 20th. The entire agreement will be these eight pages, the jurisdictional addendum, 
And then any other addenda, such as financing addenda, home inspection contingencies, are added to the contract. Many times you'll be able to use electronic signatures and electronic initials as you go through the contract, and then you'll sign and date to make your offer. If you have any questions, you can call or email me or contact your real estate broker.